Hey everyone, welcome back to new video. And in this video, we're gonna see how we can collect our state flows in both platforms, Android and iOS in our Kotlin multi-platform project. In Android, you can use collect as a state composable to collect your flows in your composable. For Swift UI, things are getting very different. So without wasting any time, let's get started with our project. First thing first, go to the description box where you can find my initial project GitHub repository link. Download the project and open up into your Android Studio. In this project, I have given you complete setup for Coin dependency injection framework and also we have created a counter view model. So open up your shared common main module and in this we are having counter view model. This counter view model contain a very simple uh, any state flow which actually used to expose our UI state. Below to it we are having update counter function. This function is used to update our counter member variable which is present in our UI state. Now I want to collect this UI state in Android and iOS. So Android, it's very straightforward. You can use collect as a state or collect as a state with lifecycle. But for iOS, things are getting little different because when our Kotlin share code is converted into Objective-C via Objective-C interfaces for iOS, on that case, we are having few problems because Objective-C doesn't support generics like Kotlin does. So when you want to pass something like state flow type T to iOS, this type T information will be lost. So how can we tackle this kind of problems? In order to tackle these problems, we will create a strongly typed implementation for a state flow. Well, a strongly typed implementation means we have to create a wrapper class across our state flow so that the type will never be lost during the conversion of our Kotlin share code into objective C. So let's see how we can do it. So for that in the shared state flow, I'm going to create a directory and the directory name is flow. Now I'm going to create a file and the file name is flow utils. We are having a class and the class name is common state flow. This is a generic class. In this, we have to pass state flow, which you want to collect in both platform. This will eventually extend state flow. In this, we are having few things. Simply press Control I and overwrite everything. In place of a replay cache, I'm gonna use flow replay cache. In place of value, I'm gonna use my flow value. In the collect function, I'm gonna use my flow. We are having a collect function. In this collect function, I'm gonna pass my collector. All right, so now it's time to create a function which we will use in iOS to expose or to collect our state flow. So function and I'm going to call this start collection. In this, we are having two things. So first is our function. So this function input parameter is type T and output is unit. Similarly, we are having on cancel. So once we stop the flow collection, on that case, on cancel block will trigger. In this function, I'm going to create a scope. With the help of Kotlin scope, in this I'm going to pass dispatcher main because I want to execute this flow collection on main thread. Next, I'm going to create a job variable and with the help of scope, I'm going to launch a new coroutine. In this, we're going to use try catch because sometimes this will throw an exception. So in order to prevent our application from crash, I will use try catch. The try, I'm going to use collect function. In this collect function, we will receive the value. Now, when we receive the value, we can use on each function and simply pass that value. If anything goes wrong on that case, we will invoke our on cancel function. That's it for our start collection function. Now it's time to cancel our job once we stop the collection. So for that, I'm going to create a class and the class name is common cancelable. This is a generic class and in this uh, we have a lambda and the lambda name is on cancel. Input parameter is nothing and output is unit. From this function, I'm going to return a common cancelable and in its lambda, I'm going to use my job and simply cancel the job. Make sure to change the return type from nothing to common cancelable type T. Okay, so we are done with our start collection function and this function is used to collect our flow in iOS. So now it's time to convert our state flow in common state flow that we were using in shared module. For that, we are having an internal function. This is a generic function over state flow and I'm going to call this common. So this will convert my state flow type T into common state flow type T. Make sure to pass your state flow. So now go to your counter view model and you can use common to convert your state flow into common state. All right, so we are pretty much done in our shared module. Now it's time to open up your iOS application and start collecting our UI. So this is our iOS application. So first thing first, I'm going to create a file. This is a Swift file. And name of this Swift file is counter view model wrapper. 
first i'm gonna import my shared code base next i'm gonna create a class and the class name is counter view model wrapper this is an observable object this will contain a variable naming view model which is our counter view model in its init function i will initialize my view model so in this we are having provide view model shared get counter view model so let me show you this provide view model so provide view model is an object in our shared code base so open up your ios main module dependency injection directory in this we are having ui module ios.kt provide view model is an object this is this is an object which actually used to inject our view model in ios so if you don't know how you can use dependency injection in kmp you can watch my this video all right so let's come back to our project in this i'm going to create one more function collect and this function is used to collect our state flow parameter of this collect function is our flow so this flow is nothing but a common state flow type is t next we are having a lambda on each and in this the input parameter is of type t and output is void or you can say unit so first i'm going to create a variable and the variable name is continuation type is checked continuation and return type of this checked continuation is void and it will never throw any kind of exception now i'm going to use flow start collection and in our on each we will receive the value so value in and i will use on each that we have created in our collect function and in this on each i'm gonna pass my value so value is optional type and we have to unwrap this value so in order to unwrap this value we will use exclamation mark okay so in place of on cancel i'm gonna use my continuation and simply resume my task flow so in ios we are having task just like we are having coroutine in kotlin in ios we are having task and this task is used to perform asynchronous operation this will return me a common cancelable so for that i'm going to create a immutable variable and the variable name is cancelable so we are having one more problem and the problem is escaping closer captures non-escaping parameter on each so sometimes this on each function will escape the scope of our collect function so if you want to use this type of function on that case make sure to annotate your lambda with escaping annotation flow collection is an asynchronous operation so make sure to use here async now next i'm gonna use a wait and with task cancellation handler i'm gonna create a task so with task cancellation handler is used when you want to cancel or manage your cancellation things manually on that case we can use with task cancellation handler in ios so here in the operation i'm gonna use await with checked continuation so this checked continuation will eventually provide me continuation value and this value is used to initialize our continuation that we have created on the top so let's initialize it so continuation is initialized with value and in our on cancel we will use cancelable and in this we are having cancel so simply use this cancel function to cancel our flow collection all right so we are done with our collect function now it's time to use it so in our init function i'm going to create a task and i want to execute this task on the main thread that's why i'm using here annotation main actor and this will give me a weak reference now it's time to use our collect function so await collect first we have to mention our so this flow is coming from our view model so i'm using my self dot view model ui state next we are having on each so in on each we are receiving the value so this value is eventually used to update our ui state so on the top i'm going to create a publish variable ui state type would be a ui state and i'm going to initialize this thing with ui state dot init counter value is zero so every time when we receive any new value on that case i'm using self ui state and simply update our ui state with incoming value all right so now it's time to cancel this task once we stop the collection or once we move forward from this screen to another screen so for that we have to create a variable and the variable name is task type would be task return type is void and it will never throw any exception i'm gonna initialize this task with this task and once we're done with our screen i'm gonna use dinit and in this dinit we will use task and cancel 
everything that we were started over here in this task. Alright, so we are pretty much done over here. Now it's time to execute this application to see whether everything works fine or not. We are having one problem and the problem is cancel is not present in our common cancelable class. We are having on cancel. Okay, now it's time to begin with our content view. So in our content view on the top, I'm going to create an observed object variable. This is a view model wrapper and initialize this thing with counter view model wrapper class. Okay, so now it's time to begin with our view. So in this view, I'm going to use a vstack. It's a kind of column for Swift UI. In vstack, I'm going to create a text and in this text, I'm going to use string and pass my view model UI state counter value. Next, we are having button. And in the button, in place of uh, label, I'm going to use text. And in this text, I will say update counter. And when user click to this button, I'm using my view model wrapper, view model and update my count. All right. So yeah, we are pretty much done with it. Now it's time to execute our application. Okay, so here you can see when I click update counter, it will eventually update my counter value. And with the help of our collect function, we will collect our state flow. So by using this, you can collect your state flows in iOS platform. For the Android, it's pretty much same. You can use collect as state or collect as state with lifecycle. And through that, you can collect your state flow. So I hope you like this video. It's a very straightforward video. We will meet in our next video where we will discuss something new about KMP. Till that, goodbye. Have a nice day.